Good evening. Welcome to uh, another webinar presented uh, tonight by the University of Zimbabwe in partnership with the Chiba Cannabis Academy, um, Africa's first uh, education platform for cannabis on the continent. My name is Trenton Birch. I head up uh, Chiba Africa. Um, we've got some incredible guests on today from all across the continent. I'm very excited to have discussions around that. Before we get into it, I just want to quickly give you a little bit of insight into the African opportunity for cannabis. This is the stat that has come out from Prohibition Partners, who are an international um, think tank and do a lot of research on the cannabis space. So there is an enormous potential for, for Africa to come online. Obviously, there's a lot of work we need to do to get to that point. Um, I find this quite interesting that, uh, you know, in terms of the amount of uh, cannabis that's uh, pre prevalent in each region, that uh, compared to other, uh, other places, uh, Africa certainly has the highest number. Um, which shows that the opportunity is enormous, um, but we just have a lot to do to bring that online. Um, and just for an interesting fact, in terms of cannabis consumers, um, the Nigerians take the lead. They obviously have a bigger population, but uh, they are the biggest users of cannabis on the continent. Um, and just in terms of the ecosphere, I think it's important we understand that there are a lot more elements to the industry other than just growing cannabis. Um, there's testing, genetics, uh, cultivation is a massive part, indoor, outdoor, extraction. And then there's all the kind of peripheral things, ancillary services, the media, legal. So there's a whole infrastructure that's needed around the cannabis industry in order to bring it online. So we're going to unpack some of those things tonight. But I'd like to uh, ask our guests to please join us so you can unmute your uh, microphones and open up your cameras and uh, let's get this thing started. So guys, if you just want to join us, that'd be great. How's it, how's it? Evening, evening. Thanks for joining us, guys. Thanks for joining us. Really appreciate it. Um, I think we can just start by, by introductions. Uh, just like to know sort of who you are, uh, where you're from, you're interested in cannabis, uh, and then we'll get straight into the, the presentation. Um, anybody, any first takers, any volunteers to go first? Uh, yeah, uh, my name is Obet Jiri uh, from Zimbabwe. I'm a professor at the University of Zimbabwe. Uh, I I'm um, into agriculture big time, so naturally, yes, uh, cannabis becomes of, uh, in, of, of interest. And uh, we are interested in uh, um, the agronomy of it, uh, growing it, and also testing and the genetics. Great. Thanks. Thanks for joining us. Right, who's next on the, on the queue to move along? Uh, yes. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Buba Kamau. I'm from Kenya. I'm a cannabis and health expert and uh, author of the book, uh, Modern Day Cannabis, right here. Yes, uh, I'm really interested in... Oh, in hold on, hold on. Just to take it back, you were showing me that book before we started, but can we just see it from the side? Because it's a uh, pretty, pretty intense book, you know? And uh, look how it's very thick as well. You just see it. Mm, mm, so, yeah, that's, uh, I'm very excited to read that. Uh, an African cannabis book written on the continent. Very exciting. Mm. You can find it on Amazon. You can also find it on Jumia locally and also on Jumia Uganda. I'm very interested in this plant. I'm hoping that the people in my country can be able to cultivate it, want to push it to the government, uh, push a petition, and hopefully get licenses and be able to start this industry in our country. Thank you. Great. Thanks for joining us. Okay, who's next? Yes. Well, away, All right, let me do it from Ghana. Yeah, yeah, I'm doing it from Ghana. There's, my name is Ajak Abraham Anno, um, the president and brain behind uh, Hemp Value Chain Access Network right. Ghana, operationally called Hepcan Ghana LBG. Um, it is a non-governmental, non-profit organization aimed at mobilizing all um, hemp enthusiasts, hemp, all uh, aspiring hemp uh, uh, people, farmers in and around Ghana and in, in, in Africa in general uh, to form a platform, a common network so that we can also venture uh, into the emerging industry in Ghana and Africa at large. Uh, I'm also the CEO of uh, Eco Green Africa, uh, a limited liability company, which is the consortium of the uh, organization. We are in advocating uh, for the final decriminalization and the legalization of uh, cannabis sativa uh, that's hemp for industrial purposes in Ghana. So we are in for good. Thank you very much. 
Great. Committed. I like uh, he- Hello, everyone. My name is Olali Akela, and I'm from Nigeria. I am uh, the project uh, manager for Living with Cannabis. It's, it's a startup. And what we, we do is we, we try to bring people on board and preach the gospel about how to get into the industry and, you know, be able to provide the, the necessary knowledge, the fundamentals, so we can grow the economy, we, we can grow the industry and at the same time, you know, grow the economy. Great. I think there's a lot of conversation around, you know, the, the, the potential for cannabis to have, you know, significant positive impact on, on our economies, um, uh, on, on the health of our population uh, from, from many different angles. Um, I think the, further, the place I want to start, though, is if you can each just talk about uh, the top line uh, level for the, for the viewers to let them know exactly um, where you stand at the moment with legislation. I understand it can be quite complex, so if we could just give a kind of an overview. Um, uh, if we could start with you, Prof, and Zim, what, what is the legal standing at the moment on that side? Uh, so uh, thank you. I think the, in Zim is um, uh, opening up. We are just starting the uh, cannabis uh, uh, story. Uh, what we have now in terms of legislation, uh, the there are two licenses that you require, which are, which are, which are now available. Uh, so the first license is for you to grow it. So you need to be licensed to 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 grow it. Then the second license is the one that you require if you need to test uh, or to do research on 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 cannabis. So all your lab works and so forth, those also require uh, uh, licensing. So uh, we, we have, uh, they started opening it up, I think sometime uh, late last year, but uh, we have quickened up this year. And uh, a couple of guys have uh, already got the licenses, particularly to grow it. Uh, the testing is still really uh, in its infancy. I think the University of Zimbabwe is in the process of applying for one uh, license to research and to, to test for uh, to, to, to do lab tests. So in terms of uh, being legal, now it's, uh, it's really allowed uh, as, uh, as long as we have those two licenses, either to grow or to test. And, and is, it, is it relatively accessible to get a license or is it, a, is it really difficult? Uh, no, it's, uh, it's not difficult. It's, uh, it's now quite uh, easy to get it. The bottleneck for us is the cost. So it's, it's, it's like 5,000 USD to get that license. So if you are local uh, or individual, it's pretty difficult. So there have been a few uh, uh, people from out of the country who have got the license. So, and then a few uh, uh, research institutions who have got the uh, research license. So here is really the cost that is uh, 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 prohibitive for the locals. But in terms of getting it, it's not, it's not uh, difficult. Okay, that's good to know. Um, who's next? Let's, uh, let's get some background on where Kenya is at at the moment. Uh, in Kenya, we haven't yet uh, established uh, the industry as much. Uh, the government still considers it uh, a harmful substance of the sort. But uh, we do have a few groups that are starting to talk about it and educate people. And we're also trying to draft a petition to the government to legalize uh, medical cannabis and industrial hemp. So the issue that we have here is that uh, they don't understand the difference between cannabis and hemp or, or, or it's used medicinally. So that's what we want, we want to start uh, giving information to people to spread the word and then get it into the government. Then later on, hopefully, they'll be able to have a legislation or a form of way of regulating the industry to give people licenses and and uh, consumers, you know, giving medical cards and all that. Yeah. So we are still okay. in the baby stages, but we will get there. We will get there. We're still in the trenches, fighting for the freedom of this plant, yeah. as as are a lot of us. Um, what about in Nigeria? What's the status there? Apart from the fact that you guys consume the most cannabis, uh, how, how legal is it there? What is the, the sort of a framework there at the moment? Oh, uh, yes, right now there is a framework. 
Okay. Uh, there is a rep. I mean, there is a representative. Her name is Honorable Miriam Hanawa from Imo State. She has a petition right now in the in the state. I mean, in the Senate. Uh, they, there's there has been talks about getting the the, the plants <clears throat> out out of the, <clears throat> the darkness <clears throat> and being brought into the light. And uh, there are groups right now preaching and telling people about this plant and its medicinal properties. And uh, uh, the last event in Nigeria uh, about the cannabis plant was held in Ondo State. And Ondo State is, is the only state in Nigeria being, being, uh, being able to push for the legalization and asking the federal government uh, to, to, to look into it. Uh, there, there, there has been there has been a lot of issues, you know, about the the, the religious aspects where, where people are, are are being skeptical about the plant. But they, they, I can I can remember because I attended the event. The event was held in Ondo State, and it was it was uh, it was organized by uh, Kana Premier, uh, Kana Hill. Uh, I could remember there, 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 there was a particular clergyman who came around and was asking about how can we tell people, religious people, about this plant and getting it legalized and being able to make use of the, the medicinal properties and the trade aspect. So uh, right now the the the, the legislation the legislation is they are they are still being skeptical and they are they don't they do not really have a, a plan right now. There is no plan. It's just in the parliament, and, and we are very soon will be able to grow legally and medicine for medicinal purposes. So it's a it's a process. It's a process. It's a process. Okay. Um, so, Sarah, I can see you've just joined the room. Um, if, if you'd like to just next to your the microphone uh, button at the top is a is a little camera button. If you'd like to click that when you can, and then we can find out what's happening in Zambia. There we go. There we go. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Can you hear me? Good. We can hear you loud and clear. We're just um, getting a quick update. If you could just quickly introduce yourself, and then um, also just give us an understanding of what the legislation is in Zambia at the moment. Okay, uh, my name is uh, Stephen Pitter. I know you've got it in the title, but it's actually a Stephen Pitter. And uh, we're doing a national development plan based on him from Marine. Uh, currently, I'm in Zobby, we actually wrote the same program uh, here. So, it's a big deal. I'm still applying now for license. In Zambia, we're waiting for the community now to bring the last conditions of license. The SIS has been signed by the president and it has been distributed to all the departments. So basically, just to continue now and sum up the license uh, again and then the cost, everything, and the application forms. Then we will be ready to go. Uh, we can't obviously put on license because I'm uh, I'm very pro hemp. You can say I am a hemp extremist. I'm not worried about CBD. I'm not worried about CBG. All I want is good old hemp and the whole plant. So yeah, we will see what the legislation. About that. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Thanks. Um, let's let's talk about hemp um, because that's obviously the the easier entry point for for many countries. Um, if, if we're talking industrial hemp as opposed to using hemp or CBD, which is medicinal, so let's just talk industrial hemp. Um, it's, a, it's a it's a much softer entry um, from 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 different opinions because it's not psychoactive, so people are less likely to be resistant to it. However, uh, there are a lot of discussions around the fact that while we might be able to grow the hemp, we can't process the hemp. Um, are those challenges, you know, I appreciate some countries are only coming online, but is that a, a general consensus 
that uh, growing hemp is, is pretty straightforward, but how we process that, how we de dehortification plants, um, how, we, how we convert it into, into products that we can actually use or um, how we strip it down. Um, is, there, is there a general feeling that that is a problem? So, do you want to answer that? I think if it's what, if that's what I think me. Yes, I think these. When we designed the national development, so our focus was to move the, the, the world in virtue of independence. That system helper. And uh, both in Zambia and in uh, Zimbabwe, the Campbell falls very short for that. So, so I was we're struggling to hear you, but there you keep trying out, so I'll, I'll come back to you. Um, what, uh, what are some of the, the, the challenges that you have on the ground? So obviously licensing is one thing. Everyone knows there's huge potential in this. Um, would you say that uh, the bar some of the barriers to entry are, are governmental, um, or, or, or would you say the bigger barrier is the perception that cannabis is you know, the devil's weed? What are some of the biggest barriers to moving your, your economies forward? If we took, I think let's start with Kenya. Yes, uh, please uh, repeat your question again. Um, I'm just uh, trying to ascertain what the barriers are to bringing your, your cannabis industry online. Well, what are the barriers? What is slowing it down? What is holding it up? The barriers, I think, is the misinformation. Uh, I, I think... If people are educated and understand, okay, the uses of the plant, if we're using it for medicinal uses, then, then that notion can be pushed to the government. The issue is that people don't understand. They think that it's just going to be used for smoking and, you know, the whole society has that, has that issue. So what we want is to educate people first, and then after that we can be able to get the petition forward and start the industry. And I guess that's education on two levels. Firstly, educating the general public, but secondly, exactly. also educating the policymakers. Mm. Okay. What's the situation in Nigeria? I mean, you know, I, I know Nigeria is a is a pretty religious country, um, but but you know, have m huge amounts of cannabis users. Uh, what are some of the barriers there to moving this thing forward? Oh, the thing is, oh, it's very funny how we 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 are just portraying this same plant in my country because it seems funny to me that because in Africa, obviously, uh, Nigeria is the highest consumer right now. And I, I see no reason why we shouldn't be, be in the fall, I mean, the, the, the front of this, of this bill in the whole of Africa. And I, 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 I'm going to give it to, to South Africa for leading, for leading the course because South Africa has, has been, has been on it for a while and it's it's really great. Uh, I think the, the only issue right now we've got is the legislation. That is just the only issue we have right now because there is no plan yet. There is, just like South Africa has been able to uh, have a conversation about the master plan, there is nothing in my country right now. But the only thing we've got right now is that the bill is in the, is in the Senate waiting for the, for the right time, waiting for the government to have a say and be able to decide if this is what we want to do or not. But I would really appreciate if the government can, you know, just start doing something about it because the earlier the better before uh, we, we miss out on this opportunity again. And even aside the, for the economy, obviously people, I, I watched, uh, I watched uh, recently I watched an interview uh, where uh, 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 a doctor was actually talking to a, a presenter about the medicinal aspect of this same plant, and the doctor kept saying they want to start using this plant to provide healing and heal people because uh, this this plant is so beautiful, and we we just need to start doing something about it. So right now there is nothing else than it's been in the in the Senate, and the old state government has been on has been pushing it for it. That is the only thing. And what they actually advise about uh, the plant uh, from the last event was for people to start uh, joining the, 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 the group and be able to gather and have a say, have a voice, because that is what we need right now. And does the bill that's currently sitting in Parliament, does it cover medicinal, recreation and industrial, or is it focused on one specific market? The, the, the bill...
is on the medical aspect, which is the, the sativa. That is the only thing we are interested in right now. Okay. Okay. Thanks for that insight. Um, uh, Zimbabwe, I know that, you know, we, 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 we sometimes talk about the fact that you guys are really bringing on the growing side uh, rapidly. Um, you know, you have a, a long history of growing a lot of, you know, uh, crops, uh, especially, you know, tobacco crops with that part of the market sort of deteriorating. Um, you see cannabis as a, as a replacement crop for that. What are some of the barriers to really industrializing and bringing this on a lot quicker? Are you, are you, are you, what, what, is it public perception? Is it the similar kind of narrative? Yeah, it's, it's, I think it's a, a similar narrative um, of people not understanding uh, cannabis uh, uh, a lot and also lack of uh, knowledge and information about it. So I think one of the key things that we do in Zim, uh, whilst we, we may have expertise to grow any crop, is to really have knowledge, particularly on um, on, on cannabis production. So I think, yeah, and it's 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 on production and also knowledge uh, on the part of policymakers, uh, which makes them take a long time to approve. For example, the licensing uh, it has taken time because of lack of understanding. So, like I think in uh, Kenya, where they confuse. Uh, industrial hemp and uh, 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 the uh, uh, cannabis, the real cannabis, you know, they, 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 they confuse that. And so that lack of knowledge is really key. But like you said, we are good on production. So we have seen a lot of, uh, a few people really starting to produce it now. Uh, but capacity to value add and uh, to test to really process it is what's still lacking and that is what we are also now pushing at the top level to try and uh, be able to test be able to 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 process and produce uh, products uh, so advocacy is really lacking uh, to push production as well as uh, a testing so this what is there now is what people know from the internet and from the general excitement about cannabis around the world. And that is what is driving them to say, okay, let's uh, give licenses. But to further, to go further than that and really incentivize production or subsidize production or subsidize uh, uh, the licenses, that's not happening because of lack of advocacy. Uh, so I, I hear somewhere where they say they've an association for cannabis. There's nothing like that in Zim. It's really individuals, individualistic at this stage. So I think we could uh, really use a bit more in terms of advocacy, building up the knowledge and capacity, and uh, trying to drive the cost of the licenses down. Okay, we've just run a poll, um, and 44% uh, of people say the biggest barriers are government regulation. Um, 31, uh, it's people's, 31% quite high. People are still perceive cannabis as in a negative light. Lack of industry education is 17% and infrastructure challenges are 6%. So I think those are pretty much in line with uh, what you guys are talking about. Um, what's the situation, uh, Agia, in, in Ghana? What are the barriers there? Similar sort of story or have you got sort of unique things? Thank you very much. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Uh, let me use the opportunity also to, to take you back a little to know the status now in Ghana. Uh, you know, over the years and now, even till now, it is illegal to do cannabis. In be, to, either to farm or to trade in it or anything now is illegal. We are we are fifty percent uh, true with the decriminalization and the legalization of the. Uh, cannabis sativa, purposely there, with a threshold of 0.3% uh, THC for industrial and medicinal purposes. So now, um, last week, uh, the regulatory authority, which is NACO, the Narcotic Control Com uh, Commission, formerly it was a Narcotic Control Board, but due to the, uh, the new uh, law and the new push, uh, the advocacy for the legalization, 
Now this uh, board was uh, upgraded to become a commission supervising or anything, everything about the legalization and uh, regulating it. So now we are we, in Ghana, we say we are 50% true with the legalization. We are waiting for the LI to be submitted to parliament for its passage, which we are very hopeful that very soon it will be done because last week, uh, the NACOG issue a communique uh, assuring uh, uh, hem enthusiasts and aspiring uh, entrepreneurs in the hem industry that yes, the LI is almost ready for parliament uh, action. Now, let me come to the, the, the barrier. The barrier has always been uh, this governmental uh, issues, legal issues uh, concerning uh, the cannabis, because now you cannot you know, handle just even a rule, not even just a rule, but a, a match, a, a stick of a match. If you are found holding, it's illegal, and uh, the law will take you up. So these are some of the, the, the barriers that uh, uh, the, the, the Ghanaian uh, people are facing. This is why some of us uh, at HealthCan uh, Ghana and other CSOs uh, are pushing and advocating uh, very well for the, that the final legalization will be done uh, so that we will get the, uh, the, 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 the go ahead, the, 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 the Z to venture into it. So we are saying, um, the cannabis conversation in Ghana now, we are saying education should form 80% to 90% of the conversation because people need to really understand the plant cannabis, the hemp. People are not able to distinguish between the marijuana and the hemp as we are speaking. So there has been a cultural stigma around the plant. So that has also been a barrier. So we are doing very well, we are doing our part as an organization, an advocacy and an educational organization, there are other civil, uh, similar, uh, similar organizations which are also advocating very well and educating people. So these are some of the few barriers. The people's mindset about the plant, the misconception about the plant. And you know, Ghana is, a, uh, is quote unquote seen as a Christian country. So the attacks from the Christian community, the Muslim community, uh, but we think with education, proper education, uh, once the airline comes out, I think um, the, the people are ready for it. So we are still pushing and we are, we are still doing the ed advocacy and we are very sure one day, one day, very soon we'll get there. So these are the few things that I can say for now. Thank you. Excellent. Thanks for that. Um, so we're halfway through. So on the subject of education, um, we are, you know, an educator. We do all kinds of courses. Um, we, we've licensed in medicinal cannabis content from our partner in America called Medical Marijuana 4 on one So it's really top, top quality content, and we've repurposed it for the African continent. But we have grow courses, medicinal courses. We have a campus uh, in Johannesburg where we teach full time, um, and uh, we're going to give away a course actually. So we're going to give away a grow course. Uh, the advantage is we do contact courses, but also online courses. So wherever you are in the world, um, you, can, you can study with us. Um, we've got a prize winner. Uh, we have uh, Mutlatsi, um, who is the winner of uh, a grow course. It's a bundle course where you get to do the course online and then join um, a, uh, a, a, um, a, a Zoom classes for a few weeks to, to go through. So congratulations to... Uh, to uh, more flat <laughs> So well done. We'll we'll be in touch just to uh, give you all those details. Um, I want to talk about something that is 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 quite uh, prevalent and, and something that comes up a, a lot at the, at the moment. There's 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 talk about uh, there's two things. They talk about um, uh, corporate capture of cannabis. There's talk about uh, you know colonization of cannabis by international companies. Um, how do you guys feel about that? Let's let's talk about you know let's talk about colonization of cannabis. Firstly, you know for for decades we've been we've had our natural resources mined and and and, and sold back to us. Um, well, what are your feelings on that? To do do you know everybody needs investment. But at what cost? Are we are we afraid of the international market coming in, taking our cannabis, growing it, taking it out, and selling it back to us? Is that a general sort of uh, 
concern? Um, uh, who, who, any, anyone wants to answer that? Uh, I've seen that uh, happen in Uganda. Yeah. Uh, Canadian companies as well as uh, Israeli companies are allowed by the government to come and farm on, in Ugandan soil and then export it to their countries as medicine. So we've seen that happen. And uh, um, they also tried it in Kenya, I think, a few years back, but our government did not allow it. But uh, I think, I think, I don't think it's something that should be should be common. I don't think it's something that should be done. I think our local people should be able to grow it and then export it rather than having internationals. But again, of course, the education and uh, the lack of knowledge to be able to farm and having the right genetics and what the industry wants exactly is uh, lacking. So I think, I think it would rather be ourselves to do it rather than, than internationals. What about right. other countries? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Prof. Bert, I know you've, you've got a few international players in Zimbabwe at the moment. What are your thoughts on the matter? Yeah, uh, it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's a pretty worrying because uh, 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 well, when you ask that, I, I, I just remembered about the, the land grabs by the international corporates, uh, which happened a few years ago. And it's the same thing that we're seeing now in this uh, cannabis industry where uh, a few international companies have actually got the licenses because they can pay the 5,000 US dollars or the 50,000 US dollars for the license. So the international companies have grabbed quite a few licenses uh, at the expense of locals. And, and that's not the only thing, you know. So, so it, that is driven by mainly cost, which the locals cannot uh, afford. But the other worrying thing is that uh, uh, apart from uh, the internationals coming to grow it here, the, they also uh, say we don't have testing facilities. So most of the cannabis is tested outside, including uh, in South Africa. So we are also uh, then de uh, deprived of that capacity to, 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 to test. So it's also done by... Uh, the the same internationals, so we are losing on the production, we are losing on the uh, testing, and definitely then yes, we get uh, the finished product exported back to us. So it's it's really worrying, and that's what we are trying to 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 reverse and build capacity to do it on our own. Yeah, Oluela, I want to I want to ask you the same question in a second, but I think we you know we have a. A situation in South Africa where you know, we, we do have international players. Obviously, Lesotho sort of next door to us has been uh, at the forefront of cannabis growing for, for, for quite a few years now. And I think the general sentiment, you know, one of the challenges in South Africa is that we, you know, I, I guess it's the same in, in every economy. We need capital investments to bring this industry online. This is not as simple as just growing a few plants in the ground. You know, the, to, to create an industry, we need infrastructure, we need machinery, um, we need education. Um, and to do that, it does take investment. And I think, you know, what, what we are trying to encourage in South Africa is, uh, you know, uh, partnerships. So if you want to come and you want to work within the South African context, then we should look to do partnerships that benefit both parties. Um, but I think, you know, it, what's true often on the African continent is um, people looking for the short win as opposed to the long win and, uh, and and looking to take sort of make sacrifices that will damage us in the long term just to make the, the short term gain. I think that's a challenge. Um, I mean, uh, all, all, well, I know that, you know, the Nigeria has had these challenges for many years with oil and, and, and natural resources. Um, do you do you feel the same is going to happen in cannabis or is it something you're nervous about? Yes, I am. I am. I am really, really nervous about it because the Remember, I, I made mention about uh, an event that, that uh, happened in Ondo State. Uh, there was actually a company uh, that came on board as uh, Oscar Capital, that the company is from Paris. And what they mainly do is that they provide uh, funding for, for, for the cannabis industry. Uh, they provide uh, a funding. They, 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 they are also interested in the markets in Nigeria. So what, what my concern right now is if we are not careful, we, we are going to lose it again. If you are what, not careful, what so steps are the government taking to avoid that? 
the thing is you know uh it's 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 difficult to say there is one step the government is taking right now because there is absolutely nothing being being uh communicated to the to the to the to the masses there is nothing the only thing we we get to know about is what is going on in the parliament and the handy earlier boss uh or the handy national drug uh, enforcement agency in nigeria the, the the boss doesn't actually support the legalization of this particular plant so the only key player are from the, that same particular states the own those the governor actually traveled to Thailand in 2019 to go study about cannabis. So he is trying to, he is the, he is the one at the forefront trying to bring this thing to Nigeria. Okay, so you do have people sort of fighting for it, obviously. Let me, there, let me come in, people. let me come in. Yeah, I go, go for it. Let, let over to yes, you, let, yeah. me, let me come in here. This issue of multinational, uh, multi-billion companies coming in, taking over, is something we as Africans must see that as the major obstacle ahead of us. That problem is staring at us, and we need to find a way, a strategy to overcome it. And, you know, I see that uh, what we are advocating for in Ghana here, that the farmer, the ordinary Ghanaian, the peasant farmer, must be seen and regarded as a partner in the, in, uh, the emerging hemp industry. Then we as citizens, Africans, must be ready to come together, pull resources together, form cooperatives, so that we can stand tall, we can have the, 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 the unity of force to, to, to have a better bargaining uh, power with this uh, foreign industry. Because automatically, we alone cannot do it. Because the lack of technical know-how, lack of funding, and all sort of other uh, technology, machinery. So by all means, we need them, but we should need them on a level uh, playing field, a win-win situation whereby the local people will not lose. So at HealthCamp, when you come to HealthCamp, what we are saying is lose. Well, whoever is coming in, join an organization, come as a member, let's all collaborate. See, uh, let's see ourselves as equal partners. Play your roles, play, let's also play our roles. For that matter, help can as, as an organization, we are building our land banks. Because before you come, we have control over the land. And we are going to bargain with you. You are bringing your money, yes, but we also have the land. If we don't release the lands to you, you cannot have anywhere to, to, to do your cultivation. So I'm not just going to sell or lease the land to you, but there should be some form of equity arrangements. In that ma matter, I think we will stand uh, in a better position. Because unlike the other resources, uh, natural resources, which this, let's take, for example, in Ghana, you come here and the gold, for instance, instance, these Chinese people have over flooded the areas, doing what we call the illegal mining, everywhere. But who are these Chinese? They came with the aid of these, our local Ghanaians. So if we, the local African, the people, local people don't, 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 that does not give the way, there's no way these foreigners can just invade in like that. But sometimes we are our own fault. We, are, we, do the, we, we create the avenue for such uh, problems. So I think in this new uh, industry, uh, the emerging industry, hemp industry, what I am calling for is that, look, there should be some form of coordination, networking, collaboration, as we have started here. It shouldn't be just webinar, webinar, but there should be some form of lay down and recognize reputable working active organizations in place so that we can uh, stand at uh, a good levels with these foreigners because for sure uh, they, they, are, they, they, they will come for sure they can and they, some are already in some are already in so that, that, that is uh, what i have for now yeah i think i think the important thing here is you know it is ultimately up to governments to you know I, i'm not a big fan of protectionism and keeping people out but at the same time based on our history and based on the exploitation of our, of our natural resources and our people, I believe that uh, there has to be a certain amount of protectionism. And, um, but that needs to be set at a, at a governmental level to make sure that the, that the deals that happen are fair and equitable for the people. Um, and that's where it gets complicated with corruption, etc. And that's a, but I think it's a problem that we need to really tackle. Yes.
Yes, and yes. If this government, if our government can do this, we the people must come together. Let's form cooperatives. Let's form working organizations in place so that we, we approach the government. Because sometimes our government, these issues of bureaucracy and stuff, the technical people are on the, are we the people on the ground? So we should be, be ready to get involved in the decision making in anything conversation around the the, 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 the industry. So, but if we sit back and look, uh, maybe say, oh, look upon the government, oh, the government will do, the government will never do it. We need to push the agenda. Yeah. Yeah, and the, the, the irony is, so we just ran another poll. Um, do you think there is place for cannabis trade between African countries? And uh, the answers were absolutely not really. Each country needs to focus on their own markets or no, let's go for the dollars and euros. And interesting enough, uh, it's 100% absolutely. Um, I know in South Africa at the moment, there is no local trade of cannabis allowed. You know, you cannot trade T CBD. Um, you have to import the CBD. Um, you can also not trade THC. Uh, so the only way you can get a license in South Africa is by having what's called an offtake agreement to provide cannabis to the international market, um, which is, uh, you know, mm. also not the easiest thing to do. And with other, other economies coming online, you know, Mexico, South America and, and countries in Asia, um, you know, on, on, in terms of price point, they, 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 they are very competitive to us. So we, we, we feel uh, from a South African perspective that we're losing a lot of traction because it's taking so long for it to move forward. Um, but do you think that, uh, you know, we, we're not the best as a continent uh, in terms of working together? You know, we do collaborate in tech and, and stuff, but we see we, we're quite isolated. Do you think that there's a room for, for more African collaboration, think tanks um, working together to sort of create a, an internal continental market? Um, Prof, I know that, um, you know, with, with some of the export guys you have in at the moment, um, are, the, are the guys who are farming there really just focused on the Europe, the Europe's and the Americas of this world? Or are they seeing opportunity to eventually export to other African countries? Um, uh, unfortunately, I think the market currently is really focused on the European market and the Americas. And, uh, you know, interestingly, the germplasm, the genetics that we have, is also being imported from the Americas and... Uh, and then sometimes from Europe as well. So there isn't much uh, in the Africa trade at the moment uh, for, for cannabis. And uh, that I think is very worrying. And, but then the good thing is that we are here now talking about cannabis. And I think this is a good start uh, to, to really try and encourage uh, standards for uh, our own African uh, or in the African trade, which we can we can say this is what we want as Africa, and we can start from that front. Uh, I think I think the 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 cost will be much cheaper if we do it within Africa rather than exporting to 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 other countries. And if we develop our own uh, genetics, then yes, we can also start now really seeing the benefit of doing it by ourselves. And I think a grouping like we are a discussion like we are having now can lead to that, and we can start uh, really thinking seriously about the genetics, uh, thinking seriously about the 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 testing, the lab works, and thinking seriously about trading it within Africa, creating our own market. So uh, there is the the huge opportunity because we we have a uh, a huge population which can have interest in, uh, in in cannabis products. And so there's no reason why we shouldn't be able to really uh, focus and motivate and build the African market. Great, thanks for that. Um, I want to talk a bit about cannabis culture because ultimately, you know, this is the first drug in the history of mankind that has actually been driven to market by the general population as opposed to the pharmaceutical industries. Um, and, and that has been that has been has grown underground by recreational users who have also discovered that the medicinal benefits and eventually have eventually just shouted so loud through crowd swell that uh, the governments, you know, in America particularly, that's uh, have had to listen. Um, what what is, what is their culture? So so in South Africa, we have cannabis clubs. We have a lot of grow stores opening up. Um, we have you know the edibles market, although still illegal. 
has been flourishing over the last sort of 24 months. Um, is there is there cannabis culture recreationally in in each of your if you, each of your countries? Um, you know, uh, Kenya. I know I know there's a lot of interest in cannabis. Do you have grow stores there? Do you have any any businesses within this space, or is it just far too new for that? No, uh, most uh, there's no like uh, shops that you can go and buy cannabis, or it's mostly all individual. And uh, maybe if you have like some friends or whatever that people can be able to form some form of group, uh, like we do have a few Rastafarians that actually uh, filed a petition to the government to legalize the recreational cannabis for spiritual use or of the sort. But no, not really, not uh, in the sense where there's business and there's somewhere where you can actually go and buy from a shop, like in Netherlands or just not, not really, no. But, but it's just in terms of like grow stores, are there, can you buy grow equipment? Are there cannabis grow stores there? Not really. You might have to either import those or have your own connection. It's more of a find your way type of... Okay. Uh, oh. yeah. And uh, oh, 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 what about... Uh, like, I, like I said... Yes, of the culture. The, the culture in my own place is uh, the, the the organizations who, who, which uh, which are called the program in Ondo states uh, that there is a group which they they, they told the, the masses about and that group that that your name is Kanahil and it's the only group that that the government supports. Because the last time, uh, if I could remember properly, the the the, the organizers had to tell the people if any one of them is going to be interested in in doing anything in the cannabis industry from on those states, you have to be a member of the Kana Hill uh, group. That is the only group I know of. So this is this is just going to be like the uh, the foundation. Because I'm very sure in 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 coming years there 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 will be more groups, there will be more groups, which is a very good thing. So that means we we are starting off. So it's very informal. Again, no growth stores, no no kind of presence of you know. It's all very very early stage. No, you yeah. get you get arrested if you if you sell or if you market any products. Yeah. You get exactly. arrested. You still get arrested, yeah. Yeah. Well, even if you're marketing products that aren't specifically cannabis or THC, if you were to sell a grow light to to grow cannabis, would you be arrested for that as well? Not really. It's like you'll only get arrested if you have a cannabis flower, cannabis bud. But other is equipment, no one really knows exactly. It's just a grow light, you know. No one knows yeah. what you're using. Sure. Yeah, because yeah, obviously, you know, when these guys are growing, they're buying agricultural products from agricultural sure. providers. I'm um, obviously just not saying it's for cannabis, I guess. Yeah, most um, of the cannabis that's uh, grown here is mostly grown outdoors. No one really grows uh, indoor, really. And like someone said here in the chat, most of the cannabis comes from Ethiopia, and that's actually very true. Yeah, we don't have as many growers, but we're, we are getting there. Yeah, yeah you, you, that's, a good, that's a good point. I think, you know, it, internationally, especially in the north, they have to grow indoors. Um, yeah. But the, it, it is, it, I mean, if you compare it, it's something like, I, I read a stat the other day, it's something like 92% more expensive to grow indoors and outdoors, you know, yes. and, uh, and we don't need to grow indoors. So, um, you know, these big facilities that have been set up overseas, a lot of them have been overcapitalized, a lot of them have, you know, have fallen flat. Um, so that is our advantage. That is a competitive advantage. We can grow much cheaper without those kind of big warehouses and big uh, uh, production facilities we need. The challenge is that when you're growing outdoors, you still, if you're growing for medicinal, you still have to have controls in place. Um, and those, yeah. are the, those are the things we have to deal with. Um, Prof Zim, Zim has a, a, a long history of sort of music and, and, and I'm aware it does have a cannabis underbelly and a, a culture. Um, I know you're a professor and probably not hanging out in the, the smoking rooms every weekend, but you know, you're in the university, you deal with students a lot. Do you, do you have a sense that there is a, a culture and you, you've got your growing uh, there? So are there grow stores there? Are, are, is there a culture that you can feel for building? Yeah, no, no, interestingly, a few days ago, we were talking to some colleagues, and I think the, the problem is that uh, people can't really differentiate between cannabis and marijuana. So maybe we actually have local varieties of cannabis, but because we don't test the CBD and so forth, we don't know. 
So, so yes, there's no one who is really, uh, if you're found uh, selling anything, uh, cannot be so. Otherwise, you are arrested if you don't have a license to, to grow and trade in it. So uh, the, 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 the problem is really lack of understanding. And uh, uh, maybe we do have uh, cannabis around, uh, but we don't know. But definitely to sell it in any shop, you can't. You can't. Definitely you cannot do that. Yeah, okay. We have a, a, a Kenyan uh, who's on to, to give a perspective on, on cannabis. I'm um, just trying to try and bring him into the room. Um, let's see if I can get him in. No, he's, he's disappeared. I'll try and get him in in a second. Um, we've got a few minutes left. Uh, let me just see if I can get him again. He just keeps disappearing. There we go. So um, uh, his name is Green. I don't know if that's his real name, but uh, I would like to – I'm going to invite you to come in as a presenter – so if you want to pop in, it'd be great to get your perspective as a lawyer. Um, what do you think the next steps are? Like, how do we work closer together? How do we make sure we're sharing knowledge? Knowledge is obviously a huge part of this. How do we, how do we, how do we improve that, guys? Need I'll to, put that out to anybody. We need to form a union and maybe communicate uh, more often, spread the word, educate each other, and just continue with this until our countries finally get a legal framework to start this industry properly. I think I have started this conversation with uh, Puta from Zambia. Uh, we are trying to see how we can have an, an umbrella organization as an African Canon Help organization or alliance where we can do our own certification, own standardization, have mm -hmm. our own market so that yeah. we can have a common brand. So mm -hmm. once we are able to do that. I think we are good to go. So that's, uh, uh, like I said earlier, unity of force is very essential. There so there should be that alliance or that sub form of the African organization. And I think this uh, webness can be a catalyst of that uh, thing so that we can have the, the cannabis creating an African union as the team is going, creating an African union uh, with cannabis. Uh, so I think it's a good opportunity for us to le leverage on. Absolutely. Uh, Green, you've just joined us. Yeah. You. I hope audition. you can hear us. Uh, you're a lawyer apparently in Kenya. It would be great to get your input. Yes. <clears throat> Greetings to everyone. My name is Michael. I am the director of Green Corporation. It's a company based in Kenya. We have actually been uh, following up on the licensing from the year 2017 up to date. Uh, with my background as a lawyer, I have listened to what uh, my fellow citizen, Mr. Kamawa, said. And uh, actually, if you look at the Kenyan laws, industrial hemp is legal. It is only that the license has not been issued yet. Because uh, if you look, for instance, uh, in the 1961 Single Convention Treaty of the United Nations, it specifically says that uh, industrial hemp will not be regulated and will not be prohibited as long as it is for med medicinal uh, research and industrial purposes. And then if you look at our localized law, one which is called the Narcotic and Psychotropic Substances Act of 1994, uh, it states that there is an agency which is mandated to grant licenses to those who apply. But you see, it's just that a company has not gone to that agency to apply. Personally, my company, we have applied for it. We have been having a lot of conversations with them because our our yes. focus is, is basically on industrial hemp. I've heard what the Ghanaian is saying. I actually agree with him 100% because people can't differentiate between marijuana and industrial hemp. Industrial hemp is the one which has less than 0.3% of THC. And for us as our company, we are looking into going into four different products. The first product is the nutraceutical feeds and hemp oil cosmetics. The second is for bust fiber for making textiles. The third product is hemp herds, which can make hemp crates for making affordable houses. And the fourth one is CBD for medicinal oil. And all this, you can get it from one plant. 
if only you have the infrastructure to do the value addition of of them yes so for for me i i personally i i would be really interested to meet with the uh, kamau if he is in kenya currently i am in kenya let me just are you in the, uh, in the hemp kenya group uh no 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 no, no. I'm, I'm not in any group personally actually you know there are, there are very many people trying to push this agenda because I know there is a, there are two cases going on in court currently. There is one in there are two cases actually going on trying to push the agenda. There are some people pushing from the parliament angle, like you have said, trying to yeah. place a petition before parliament. And there are others like us now who we have gone through the law and we know industrial hemp. There is no way you can say you are prohibiting industrial hemp. You know. Like we have even gone to each of the agencies, we've spoken to all of them, and they all agree. It's only that okay. they don't want, you know, that fear of the unknown. They don't want yeah. to be the ones who put the signature on it. Yes. yes. So, uh, yes, no, I'm really glad with the conversation. Uh, for me, I will be interested in if there is a way we can all partner, because the challenge we have now is the value. That's just I'm going to tell you that we do have a group and we are already forming a petition. Just that yes. I want you to email me so that I can add you in the group so that you can be part of us. Okay. Okay. Yeah. We'll, 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 connect, we'll connect you guys off. We'll continue. Thank, yeah. thank, thank you so much for that, that input. A very valuable. Um, often, mm -hmm. you know, legislation is so deep and hidden that we don't know that it's a lot more open than we think. Guys, we, we've come to the end. I think the other thing, just sort of in, 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 in closing, um, you know, we, we're all, we all talk about sort of medicinal and industrial, but uh, based on international trends and based on usage, you know, we, we haven't really spoken much about the recreational market, which has huge potential. Um, you know, if you look at, if you look at uh, alcohol and how big that market is and uh, the potential for recreational cannabis to move into that space and, uh, and uh, certainly is, is not as destructive and bad for your health as, as other substances like alcohol. Um, that is something I think will be the sort of last bastion to fall um, because we've got a lot of people sort of uh, jumped through in terms of, you know, legislation, mindset, education. But I think that also has massive potential, especially from an export perspective. You know, genetics that we can export. You walk into Amsterdam coffee shops and there's always urban poison as a, as a genetic there. So I think there's huge potential in that, but I'll leave that for, for, for another discussion. Um, guys, I just want to thank you all for your time. I think this is a... As far as I, I know, this is probably the first webinar that's ever happened with so many African countries on. So it's very inspiring to hear that um, things are happening in different pockets. Um, you know, from a South African perspective, we are moving quite fast. And, and we just, in, I would encourage you all to, you know, start groups, lobby, educate, keep talking about it. Because the, the, the longer it takes to bring this online, the longer we use to lose the opportunity to make this into what it should truly be. So thank you all for your time. And uh, we'll see you again soon. Have a good evening.